let's have no ado on this one. We've got Zeus SDK out. We've already learned how to set it up in another video. Maybe you struggled through that. Maybe there were issues. Maybe you're working on an iPad, a Raspberry Pi. This is the video about Zeus IDE, an integrated development environment that you don't have to download, you don't have to set up, you don't have to run. It's all online, it's in your browser. We're gonna figure out how it works right now. So pull up a browser and from wherever you are, go to gitpod.io forward slash, and then this uh, little hashtag here, HTTPS, blah, 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 github.com forward slash liquid apps IO forward slash Zeus hyphen IDE. And this will take this repository that's at this GitHub location and run a development environment there. So here we go, Gitpod is starting. I might wanna turn my Brave Shields off for this website. Now you're going to need to log in with a GitHub account. If you don't have a GitHub account, go ahead and make one. This little box gets lower and lower def the larger you make the text. A funny side effect of, of how CSS works. So anyway, it's gonna be pulling some images, setting everything up. This might take about five minutes to spin up in total. An integrated development environment will come up where we can write our code, where we can test things, where we can view previews, where we can open up a helpful chain explorer, all sorts of goodies. All right, here we are in the Zeus IDE. Now, hopefully, unless you're running on like a phone, you'll have more space than I do. I've pumped up the text for you so that you can see things a little better. So we've opened up a problems bar down here. No problem so far. We have Nodios running in another terminal, another tab. Here we are Zeus unboxing DAP, which is a box that has all the various services you could possibly want to integrate. And then we have a list of our open ports, which you can actually open previews right here, or we can open them up in another tab. So we have powerful capabilities for interacting and viewing with what we're working on. While it's unboxing all the stuff, you know it's unboxing testing frameworks, all the DAP services, IPFS. This probably looks very familiar to you if you've used integrated development environments on desktop like VS Code, Visual Studio Code. Over here we have an explorer. Pump this out a little bit. In that, that folder, this, this is where we've unboxed DAP here. There's all the stuff we're gonna be working on in our contracts and uh, eventually in our front end folder as well. Once it's done unboxing, we should see that. Over here, you can uh, interact with GitHub. Of course, you need to do some, some stuff here first. So let's say I wanted to merge some changes from here and then actually create a pull request. Here, up here, I have my GitHub avatar and various things I can do. I have generally the functionality you would expect from an integrated development environment including a bunch of editability and finding a whole set of files and and there are no downloads involved. I don't have to deal with any setup except for this initial wait time, which we're looking at right now. You only have to do it once unless you close the window. <laughs> and Some interesting uh, services going on here with TronWeb, Stockfish, RippleLib, and Bitcoin Core being installed. There's just so much going on with ESJS, Scatter.js, Transit, that we've got a lot to get going here. And in the future, you can actually fork out this repo, you can get rid of the compile step, or you can remove the compilation or whatever for services you don't need. You can customize the tests yourself and uh, make it right for you and the services that you're going to be using. All right, we are done, which is fantastic. We have a command line down here. Now, Nodios says killed, but you can verify that EOS is in fact running locally. And now we have a front ends folder here with our main front end in main for this sample DAP. And uh, we could actually do Zeus create contract as it says, Zeus create contract. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, we're not gonna actually use this contract. I'm just running through quickly. Tutorial contract. So now in within the contracts folder, and of course in the EOS folder under that, we can see that tutorial contract here. But, you know, we don't have to actually work in this little terminal window down here. We can go over to our IDEs Explorer and go to contracts and also see there that we have our new tutorial contract. And it's ready to go. If I open it up in this nice tabbed interface, I see that it's ready for VRAM, it's ready for liquid log, it's ready for uh, liquid, liquid oracles and everything related. It's ready for scheduled tasks, accounts, the liquid lens read function, uh, liquid vCPU, 
including some sample stuff for testing a schedule, uh, for dealing with V accounts, and for working with VRAM. Let's see what else we got here. We got some token stuff um, the, from Cold Token. Very cool, very cool. All ready to go to customize, to implement these services in your DAP from right here. Now, there's actually a very cool add-on that DSPHQ has enabled, one of our DAP service provider DAP network portals. The description of how to do it is on EOS Inbox's Medium, but uh, it's Git pod preview, the URL, and then specifying the network to be local. So let's go Git pod preview uh, DSPHQ.io, and then the network equals Git pod URL 8888, go. And that pulls up this little window here with DSPHQ. You can actually pop it out if you want into another browser as well. And we can uh, op we could change networks here to mainnet to testnet. Uh, we, we can learn to do some stuff. Just these are links to various Liquid Apps resources. But you can also explore blocks here. You could search for an account, including vAccount support on your local development environments, like not local, but your, your local Git pod. So all these functionality for exploring what's going on, no worries, you can check it out with DSPHQ. And now I wanna actually run the front end. I'm not gonna do it with liquid storage, but let's run front end main. Oh, I can't do it from there, obviously. All Zeus commands have to be performed back up in the main box folder. Zeus run front end main. See if that works. It says front end is listening on port 3015. Now a little thing should pop up saying, yep, a service is listening on port 3015, but is not exposed. So I'll hit expose, it's available. And now I can open a preview of my front end or open it in a new browser tab. I'm gonna do the latter. This might give us an error, but uh, you should see it tried to load the front end. There's currently an error in this, uh, this box's front end which I'm sure will be handled soon. It might not even exist by the time you're watching this tutorial. Uh, but if you can, you can take your front end, which is in the front ends folder, whichever front end you want that you've built here and just pull Zeus run front end main and it will run your front end for you and you'll be able to interact with it and interact with the local Nodios through your smart contract that you've developed in contracts, EOS, whatever's in there. Now, nothing you do here for now will be saved because we're working on the, the, the core, like the repo. Let's open this Git, GitHub thing here. We're working on Liquid Apps IO Zeus IDE. We don't want you to be able to make changes to the, the starting point repo. So you have to head over to repos here. There's several ways to do this. You could also hit F1 and search through these handy commands that Gitpod provides. Uh, it says you don't have push permissions for ID Zeus IDE, obviously. So let's fork this repo. A little thing will come up, of course it's under me, that says I need to grant permissions. Gitpod is requesting additional permissions. I will authorize it with my GitHub. Now I should be able to fork. All right, up here, choose to create an own fork or select a different fork for below. Fork to my account. I'm gonna fork it to my account. Successfully forked to Bitkenstein and adjusted the remote URL. Now I can go ahead and take these changes that I've got. If I go over here, let me uh, drag this out, to this uh, version control, repository source control tab. This one, my main folder that I'm working on here and stage that. Now that's staged, ready to go to the repo, right? So I'll add a message just saying, uh, add new contract and I'll commit it. And then that's not enough, of course. I, I also have to push, so let's push. So let's change to Bitkenstein Zeus IDE over there. Change to my new, my new repo, right? There are no changes because I've already pushed it to master. So now if I head over to my GitHub, there's a new repo that's forked from Liquid Apps. And uh, it says, add new contract. Uh, Bitkenstein did this, the commit adds the new file that we, I mean, we just generated it, but uh, if you coded contract in here, then it would be in your new fork of the repo. And now I could go to Gitpod and actually have this repo address right here with my username instead of liquid apps, gitpod.io, uh, hashtag 
Badoom, and it will spin that up instead. All right, so you can make changes to the repository that your Gitpod environment's running on as long as you fork the repository. Now, the way we've done it will cause a minor problem because it'll say there's this, this folder already exists because I have dap, contracts, EOS, so it can't Zeus unbox dap there. So ideally, you'll make additional changes to prevent this from happening where it tries to unbox dap and dap already exists and all that but you can fork into your own repository and then you can go to file, uh, where's share? Um, there's a share, here it is. You can go up to the top right where your user account is and click share workspace snapshot to send a snapshot of the workspace to someone or share running workspace. Sharing running workspace will give me a link that lets people share the workspace. However, this also lets them commit in my name. All right, it doesn't share it and they log in with their own GitHub. It lets them commit in my name. So it, it's limited. You might want to create a shared GitHub in that case in order to do work with this right now. There might be better solutions that I'm not aware of yet. Obviously, someone could spin up their own workspace and then work on the same repo. Uh, but this is the quickest way to collaborate is sharing the workspace. So anyway, that's a really fast intro to the capabilities of Zeus IDE. It's cutting edge stuff. It does help. I'm still getting used to it, but it does really help with the environment issues that people can run into setting up on their machine and all the time it takes in general to set up an environment. And there are a lot of really cool integrations and of course this integrated development environment that ease the development process. I hope the hackathon is going great for those participating and I will see you all soon.